But the important thing is, what can you do as an individual? So for starters, if you know your genetics, that will tell you if you're a fast or slow metabolizer. Then, depending on, and regardless really of whether you're a fast or slow metabolizer, uh, but particularly if you're a slow metabolizer, you might want to consider some of those dietary strategies to increase the expression of CYP1A2. But more importantly, you really want to limit your caffeine intake uh, because CYP1A2 is a double-edged sword. Not only does it detoxify caffeine, but it can also activate heterocyclic amines, which are carcinogens found in cooked meats and, and uh, other products. So when I found out I was a slow metabolizer, I eventually cut back and I, I drink decaf. At first, I thought, it, you know, I was going to get pounding headaches and be really tired, but it didn't really affect me that much. Other people, they do experience withdrawal symptoms. Uh, and so for them, my recommendation is always to make half calf, half decaf. For a while, I had two different tubs because I make my coffee myself and I put one scoop of regular and one scoop of, of uh, decaf and kind of mix it. And then eventually increasing the ratio to have more decaf. And then eventually you won't even notice that. That's a so clever think... life hack. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fast metabolizer. So All right. lucky you. Can... Yes. And I yeah. enjoy coffee. <laughs> yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you find it insightful, I invite you to leave a comment below and share it with someone who may find it interesting. Don't forget to explore the video description for more valuable content. There, you'll find a link to access my free webinar on Epi Nutrition, a groundbreaking health paradigm I teach in my university courses. Join me to explore how nutrition can optimize gene expression. Thank you for watching and being a part of this vibrant community.